Welcome to my second video on my IoT project, which is an Internet of Things project. In this video, I'm going to show you how to take a Pi and take it off the grid. Essentially, I'm going to power it by solar power, and this is an important part of my project. Now, I haven't filled you in exactly on what this project is going to be yet, but it's going to be an outdoor device that's going to take certain sensor readings and it's going to transmit these readings up to the cloud. Of course, because since outdoors, I don't actually have direct link to any kind of mains power, so I'm going to have to find an alternative way of powering this device. So there aren't a lot of options for the Raspberry Pi to do this. There is um, being able to do PoE or power over Ethernet, but running cable outside and keeping that weatherproof is a little bit difficult. So what I decided to do is I'm going to power it with a solar panel. So this is the 6 watt solar panel that I purchased. It's pretty simple. It connects via USB or through a regular power style adapter. Since the Pi has USB in, I'm just going to keep this connected and use the USB connector. There is a challenge though on how to use solar power with a Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi itself is this piece and if you didn't watch my last video, I kind of did a review of this Raspberry Pi Zero W. Now to connect a power supply to this, it just goes in through the mini USB port, powers up the device. That's pretty easy. To connect solar power, it gets a little bit more complicated because what happens when there is no solar power available? Um, how does the Pi get power then? In this case, I'm going to use a multi-stage power solution. And the first thing I'm going to do is install a UPS or an uninterruptible power supply. This will allow the Pi to run off battery power whenever there is no power from the sun. From there, I'm also going to connect the solar panel up to that. Now this, I looked at a lot of different solutions and there's only a few out there. I actually even considered making one myself, but it was actually kind of complicated to do and there's a lot of stuff to worry about as far as how, how to charge the battery, how to switch between if it's plugged into the wall versus running off of solar power. Luckily, there is an option out in the market called the PiJuice Zero. There's actually two versions of this. One is the PiJuice Zero designed to work on this smaller board and the other is a regular PiJuice which incorporates the battery directly into the board and that's more for a full-size Raspberry Pi. So the one I'm going to be looking at is the PiJuice Zero and that is this board right here. Before I get into what this board does and all the kind of functions that it has which makes it worthwhile purchasing the board versus trying to make my own solution, let's go ahead and install this board. Now, this board is a form factor similar to the Pi Zero and what this is called is called a fat board or fat with a pH. And the way this works is it's going to lay over these header pins and it's going to scrunch down onto the board and it will be actually just become one. But before I do that, I need to install these standoffs and these standoffs will make it so that the backside of the board doesn't short circuit anything on the main Raspberry Pi board. So let's go ahead and do that and install the standoffs and screw and attach the Pi hat to the top of it. Okay, that's pretty much it. The standoffs actually come with the Pi Juice kit. As you can see, it's a nice compact package now and it's pretty much ready to go. So the next thing we'll do is we'll talk a little bit about the ports that Pi Juice actually adds onto it. So this connector over here is for the battery. For my project, um, I'm using a 5000 milliamp battery. You can pretty much use any size battery. In fact, on the site for the Pi Juice, they give a couple recommendations and actually sell batteries that work with this. 5000 seems to be a good in between um, as far as size, weight, and how long it could power the system. So this will connect to that port. The only other port to add input on this as far as power or connecting peripherals is, is this second USB mini port. And this is going to be the one where the solar panel will connect. Now, if I was just using this as a battery backup, I could plug mains power into here, much like what I did with the regular Raspberry Pi and just connected a USB adapter to it. 
But in this case, this will be the connector for the solar panel, this will be the connector for the battery, and then all the sensors can connect along this board top over here where there's uh, the headers from below are passed through to the top. Now, I have to be careful because some of the header pins that do pass through to the top of this pie hat are used up by the pie hat itself. Now, inside the directions for the pie juice uh, fat are the pin layouts and these don't actually come in the box but the box does come with this card and this card points you to the pie supply website and on their website they have a lot of information on how to get this connected also in the box is this fcc and uh eu compliance card to show that this is ce certified and fcc certified that was another reason that I wanted to go with something off the shelf as opposed to building something as complex as this because now I do not have to actually go through any kind of rating system to make sure what I did doesn't interfere with anything else and this component is ready to go to be part of my project. I now have the Raspberry Pi and the Pi Juice connected back up to the keyboard and the mouse. I have the HDMI cable uh, connected for a monitor and I'm going to go ahead and power this up. Now I have two options for powering this up right now. I can power it up through the Raspberry Pi board or through the connector for the Pi Juice. In this case for the first um, kind of boot so that I can load the software, I'm just going to go ahead and plug this into the normal Pi connector. Once I do that, the system starts to boot up right away. Now, the Pi Juice itself has a separate connector on it that's actually able to take different um, voltages and amperages and kind of condition that into either charging the battery or powering the Pi, so it's much more flexible. But this is a connector that I'll eventually be using for this solar panel. But for right now, I just want to go ahead, get everything booted up, and install the software. To install the software, I'm going to have to open a terminal window and use a get apt to go ahead and download and install it. So let's go ahead and do that now. So to open the terminal window, I'm going to go ahead and click right here. This will open the terminal interface. Now at the login screen, I'm going to go ahead and type in sudo, which gives us root access, apt-get install pyjuice-gui. Just going to make sure I spelt everything correctly and go ahead and hit the enter key. So this is downloading the files, going ahead and installing them. We we'll go ahead and say yes. Okay, now that it's installed, I'm going to go ahead and close this window. And we're going to restart the Pi. Now once the system reboots, we'll be able to open the graphical user interface of the Pi Juice and take a look at all the settings, also to check to see if the power and the voltages are coming in correctly, and hopefully be able to enable this solar panel. The system is rebooted, so now if I go to the main Pi menu and click on Preferences, we now see Pi Juice settings. So we'll go ahead and open that up. So it takes a few seconds to update, but what we're looking on this first menu is the condition of the actual um, fat board on top, which is the pie juice. So what we're seeing on the first part is battery. The second part is the GPI power input. This is the power that's coming through the GPIO from the Raspberry Pi itself. The USB micro power input is not present. This is because I do not have anything connected to it. This will be where eventually though the solar panel will be connected. And as of right now, everything is looking okay. So we have a couple different things. We'll wake up alarm. Um, we can create system tasks, uh, system events, custom scripts. In the configuration menu, it will allow me to make some adjustments to how the Pi Juice actually operates, including what the buttons do on it, how the LEDs work, and what kind of battery it uses. Also, the input-output and the firmware. So let's start by just checking to make sure the firmware is up to date, which it is, so we're good with that. 
Next, we'll check the battery. Um, right now, it's set for the BP6X1400. I'm using a 5,000 milliamp battery, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch that over to the 5,000 milliamp LiPo. I can close this. Right now, we're seeing zero percentage on the battery. You know it's been flickering back and forth. Um, I'm not quite sure why this is doing it. It's something I have to look into a little bit more carefully, but there is actually no battery connected right now, so it should be saying 0%. Well, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to shut down and I'm going to go ahead and connect up the solar panel to see if we start to see any kind of power input present on the Pi Juice's micro power input. Now, as I was putting this together, the solar panel came with this connector for USB that goes over a kind of a circular a power connector. It doesn't fit on the board because it's a right angle. This won't be a problem in the final project because this HDMI cable won't be present, but right now it is a problem. So I had to go get this adapter that basically is just a, a female to male adapter and it's straight so it won't interfere with the HDMI cable. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in. Then I'm going to connect it up to the board and now we will go ahead and start it back up again. Now when there's power coming in through the Pi Juice itself, there's a button on the side that's used to boot up the Pi. If it wasn't connected to here and we're just using the Raspberry Pi Zero, just connecting the power cable will cause the Pi to boot. Now we'll go back we go to the preferences and check out the Pi Juice settings again. And now we can see that on the USB micro power input, there is power present. Now this is switching between bad and present, most likely because I'm indoors right now, I'm just working under internal lights. So there isn't a lot of uh, power being generated by the solar panel, but maybe if I switch it around or turn it towards uh, some of these lights that I'm using, to light up this work surface, um, we'll see it comes back on again. So really, the solar panel is working fine. It doesn't have the best light in here. We'll have to test this outside eventually. The next step is going to be to go ahead and install the battery. Now the battery is very important because for the most part, everything will be running off of the battery and the solar panel will just be there to charge it. So what will happen is the Pi Juice will come up turn on, it will do its processes and then it will turn itself back off. And whenever it's able to, it will charge the battery off the solar panels. Now there is an important thing to consider with the battery and I did make this mistake. Now I went out and I bought a 5,000 uh, milliamp battery just off of Amazon. And one of the things that were problematic is I had a hard time finding the correct battery and I actually bought the wrong one. If you look at this battery terminal, it only has two connectors. and this means it's just a positive and a ground, uh, but there's no safety mechanism built in this. The Pi Juice itself is designed to use NTC, and NTC is a temperature uh, system that allows it to charge the battery without overheating it and doesn't cause any problems such as batteries uh, swelling or even bursting into flames. The kit comes with a connector that allows you to use your own thermistor to do the battery charging, but I had a hard time even finding one of those to put on this battery through any of the sources I could find locally. So what I did go ahead and do is I ordered a battery that has a built-in one and that actually had to ship overnight from Europe. So it will arrive probably next week. So for now, we're gonna take a little break from this project and we will come back to it once I get the proper battery and then we'll go ahead and install it. It's a few days later and the replacement for this battery pack has arrived. And I was actually kind of surprised at how big it was. This will be fine for now, but I'm gonna have to rethink my enclosure for this project um, once I have it done. So let's uh, go ahead and wire this up and see what happens. The battery just connects right to this three pin plug right here. Just gotta make sure that you have the signal, the ground and the intelligent part of the cable in the right direction. And that plugs in. If you notice, the little green light came on because it is receiving power from the battery. I'm then gonna go ahead and plug the solar panel just to see what happens uh, with the battery connected. And I'll plug that into the power input on the Pi Juice. 
And finally, I'm just going to plug in the mains power. And that will start the Raspberry Pi booting. My goal is to be able to remove this and run strictly off solar power. But for this first boot, I'm going to connect everything and we'll just see what happens. The Pi is now booted up, so let's go ahead and open up the Pi Juice Preferences. Under the hat um, settings, we can see that the battery is at 68% and charging. It's putting out 5.057 volts and it's 19 degrees Celsius and it's charging from the 5 volt IO. And this means the 5 volt IO is the connector to the mains power that's coming through the Pi board. The temperature at 19 degrees Celsius, this is that NTC function of the battery that allows us to know how hot it's getting for much safer charging. The GPIO is good. Um, the USB micro power input, this is the solar panel that is saying present. There's no faults. Let's go ahead and see what happens if I cause a problem by removing the mains and all of a sudden it goes to solar and battery. Now the main power is removed and we can see that the pipe is None the wiser, it's still running fine off of battery power. Though the USB micro power adapter uh, input is saying bad now, and that's because the solar panel isn't getting enough light. But that's to be expected since right now I'm, again, indoors and there is no sunlight, and the lights that are on this probably aren't strong enough to actually produce enough power to charge the battery. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and reconnect the mains power. This will allow the battery to charge back up. The Pi juice is none the wiser. It didn't seem to even care that I pulled the power out um, and put it back in. What we're gonna have to do next is test this solar panel outside when there's some sunlight, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna work fine, so I'm not gonna worry about that right now. In the next video, we'll go ahead and install some sensors so we can start getting some data readout. This is gonna require to write some more programming, um, mainly in Python to be able to read the sensors and then using PHP, process that and push it up to the cloud. So until that next video, this is where I'm at right now. And if you like this video and wanna see more, make sure you click the subscribe button and hit the little bell icon if you wanna be notified every time a new video comes out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.